welcome to my channel IIT J Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I am going to demystify something that has troubled me ever since I started my teaching career or maybe even as a student it bothered me so much uh, that's the relation uh, in transformers that we write the primary voltage into primary current is equal to secondary voltage into secondary current and we just write it without any explanation what happened whatever happened to cos phi because power is not voltage into current it's voltage into current into power factor right but while doing the transformers without any explanation just like that almost all the textbooks that we study uh, at je level they just write vp into ip is equal to vs into is by energy conservation as if that explains anything so uh, that really bothered me and i was always looking for something uh, how to explain that and fortunately i came across a problem in jan kalda which wants us to prove precisely that and that gave me confidence uh, that I should uh, venture into that territory and try that out. So I've tried that out and I've been able to prove it and I'm feel, feeling very happy after proving it. I'm, I'm going to share my enthusiasm and also my working with you um, uh, how to go about proving that uh, VPIP is equal to VSIS in a transformer. So without much ado, let me state the John Calda's problem and then uh, I'll uh, explain uh, how things uh, work out. Okay. So let me formally read the problem statement. So it says that uh, relationship uh, between the voltages and currents of primary and secondary coils of transformer are generally very complex. However, real transformers are often close to an ideal transformer which has the following properties. What are the properties? The inductances L1 and L2 of the coils are very high. So this is a very high inductance. This is very high inductance. Now high and low are relative terms. So when you say high inductance, that means that's as compared to the load impedance. So you'll be having some load impedance across the secondary. So as compared to the load impedance, these inductances are very high. Okay. And second is the coupling between the primary and secondary coils is maximal. So when we say coupling is maximal, we mean that every field line that's crossing the primary, it is also associated with the secondary. Okay. So every a field line is passing through every turn of the secondary and we say that uh, flux leakage is negligible so so perfect linking of flux so whatever flux is passing through the primary uh, same amount of flux per turn is passing through the secondary okay uh, so that's wh what we mean when we say that coupling is uh, maximal okay the uh, the resistances of the coils are negligible okay so these two things have no resistance you can say and losses in the core hysteresis eddy currents etc are negligible and under these conditions, what are we supposed to prove? Show that in this case, all currents and voltages have same phase and following equations hold. What is that? V2 by V1 is N and I2 by I1 is 1 by N, where N is the ratio between number of turns in the secondary coil to the number of turns in the primary coil. So this is the problem. If you want, you can give it a try. Uh, it's uh, not a conventional one, but it's not something that you will not, in fact, especially if you have watched my previous video on how to use complex numbers in alternating currents, and how to use complex number with mutual inductance uh, you should be able to work out the maths yourself and in case you would like to watch the video where i have explained the use of uh, complex numbers with mutual inductance and uh, uh, in general why the complex number method works you can have a look at my previous video i'll uh, give the link in the description box also okay and right now i'll just be using that method so i'll just go ahead with my analysis okay let's see so let's say uh, this is the current i1 is the primary current flowing in this direction i2 is the secondary current in this direction uh, so uh, it turns out that later on i'll get a negative sign before i2 which only means that it's uh, against the the direction that i have chosen okay and this dot convention means what uh, so uh, uh, to get the proper sign of mutual inductance uh, or uh, which side there will be positive battery to mutual inductance which side there will be negative battery for that uh, we use this dot convention it only means that when increasing current enters to this this red dot then in the other inductor this red dot will become the positive terminal of the battery because otherwise there's always an ambiguity in the 2d diagram so just to avoid the ambiguity and to understand the polarity of mutual inductance we use the dot convention that is when the increasing current enters this red dot then the other red dot will become the positive terminal of the mutual inductance battery so that's the convention we use here okay and what are the ideas so ideal transformers under given assumption l1 l2 and mutual inductance are all very large as compared to the self inductance z so uh, uh, l1 and l2 and m uh, you can as well assume that they tend to infinity as compared to this 
the load impedance that is z okay the magnitude of this tends to infinity you can say and maximal coupling means mutual inductance is under root of l1 l2 that can be shown uh, I'll, i'm not going to do that in this video but that i do in my normal course okay so mutual inductance uh, cannot be more than root l1 l2 this uh, this is possible we can prove this okay and then also uh, the ratio of uh, self inductances is n square where n is the ratio of primary to secondary turns rather it should have been other way around n is the ratio of secondary to primary this should be secondary to primary so let me write this secondary to primary okay and uh, so why is that why is that uh, n square why because uh, when you have an iron core uh, inside so uh, uh, due to one turn some magnetic field is produced and when you have n turns the, uh, the amount of magnetic field produced in that becomes n times uh, for each turn uh, the magnetic field gets multiplied and then when you are finding the flux linkage you have to multiply it by the total number of turns so magnetic field is also proportional to n and of course number of turns is proportional to n so that means self inductance will become proportional to n square when you have a magnetic core okay uh, ferromagnetic core kind of an arrangement okay so l2 by l1 is n square when n is the ratio of secondary to primary turns so l1 is l then l2 can be written as n square l and because of perfect coupling we can say mutual inductance is root l1 l2 that is n times l okay now uh, it will be pretty straight forward we can apply kirchhoff's voltage law to the primary and the secondary loops so what we'll do uh, let's look at the primary loop so what's the potential drop across this inductor so we can say i1 complex into j omega l uh, and plus uh, j omega i1 into j omega l plus i2 into j omega m why because the battery due to mutual inductance will depend on i2 right and minus the complex voltage so let's say we call this uh, in the complex domain v complex so then in this loop i can write that uh, i1 j omega l plus uh, j omega m i2 minus v is equal to 0 or if you want you can put i2 over here so i2 j omega m you can write okay so basically sigma ir is equal to voltage you can say or sigma ir minus e is equal to 0 as you do in current density so this equation is parallel to that right so i1 into j omega l plus j omega m i2 because this battery is going to be j omega m i2 okay and j i'm using for iota okay and uh, self battery is going to be j omega l uh, into i1 okay so i hope you understood equation one that's uh, kvl to the primary loop similarly we can apply the kvl to the secondary loop what is that so here you see if you uh, uh, traverse this like this so this will be i2 j omega l2 and then there will be i1 j omega m okay uh, because mutual inductance battery in this will depend on i1 and not i2 so i2 into j omega l2 and plus uh, i1 into j omega m and uh, then minus i2 z is equal to 0 so sigma ir you are doing equal to 0 that's what we are doing uh, equivalent so i2 into omega n square l so this is uh, and there should have been a j i forgot to write a j although i solved it correctly finally so j i2 uh, omega n square l actually uh, let me write it nicely it will take a little while so uh, so let me put the i2 a little this side and let me create some space for j so j omega and this is l2 basically n square l is nothing but l2 so i2 j omega n square l plus j omega m i1 plus i2 z is equal to 0 so i hope you understood this uh, this is in this loop so i2 j omega l plus i1 j omega m and plus i2 z complex is equal to 0 now you see equation 1 and 2 these are uh, simultaneous equations in the complex variables i1 uh, I1 and I2 are the two complex variables and I have two linear equations in the complex variable so I can simply solve this uh, uh, simultaneous set and if you solve that you get I1 comes out to be n square upon z minus 1 by omega l times j times uh, uh, complex voltage and I2 comes out to be minus n by z and v complex right now if you look at these two uh, uh, carefully you can see that because inductances are very very large so l is very very large as compared to z so this term is negligible as compared to the first term okay so for practical purpose we can say that this is uh, we can just drop it out uh, as compared to n square by z 
so what are we left with so i1 is approximately we can say that n square by uh, here i should have made z complex okay so i1 is nothing but n square upon z complex times voltage right and we can see if uh, z were only purely resistive load so z will be a real number in that case uh, current and voltage will become in same phase although here the intention uh, was to prove that i1 is in same phase as i2 and v1 is in same phase as v2 although i1 and v1 need not be in same phase they will be in same phase only when the z is uh, real or you can say z is purely resistive so but at least you can see that uh, i1 is nothing but n square by z times v and i2 is nothing but uh, uh, i2 uh, i'll okay i2 is minus n by z complex times v and if you divide i2 by i1 if you take or uh, so what do you get so i2 upon i1 if you divide uh, this term is negligible and that's approximately 1 by n so this was what we had to prove and you can clearly see that uh, uh, in fact this is minus i2 by i1 and minus i2 only means that uh, if i had taken i2 in the other direction so then this i2 and this i1 would have been in same phase why because the ratio is nearly real it has negligible complex part you can see we can ignore this complex part so then the ratio of i2 and i1 is real that means what they are in same phase in fact i2 and i1 as i have taken their 180 degree out of phase but conventionally if you take uh, i2 in this direction then this i1 and this i2 they'll be exactly in the uh, or you can say almost in the same phase to the degree that your impedance is very small as compared to the uh, inductances of the primary and the secondary okay so uh, so we have proved the, that i2 and i1 are in the same phase and uh, of course uh, now v2 is what so so i can say minus i2 and i1 are in same phase minus i2 is opposite to i2 okay and also from equation 4 we can see that v2 is minus i2 z so uh, uh, so you take this z over there and v2 is what v2 is the drop across this uh, uh, impedance right so if you take i2 in this direction or minus i2 in this direction so drop across this is minus i2 times z right you can put a complex here so that is your v2 that is the output voltage across the secondary so what is that so uh, so that is uh, uh, i2 times again put it z complex minus i2 times z complex and that's simply n times v okay uh, you can see from this equation i2 minus i2 times z is n times v and that means what that secondary voltage is uh, just uh, in phase with the applied voltage across the generator or you can say that it is just proportional to the primary voltage uh, because v is nothing but the voltage across the primary coil okay mm -hmm. so that means what this uh, the secondary voltage and the primary voltage they are in same phase okay and uh, so what have we proved actually we have proved that secondary current and primary current are in same phase with each other secondary voltage and primary voltage are in same phase with each other although primary voltage need not be in phase with primary current and secondary voltage need not be in phase with secondary current but uh, since cos phi factor is nearly same so that's why you can write vp ip is equal to vsis when inductance is very large so you can just write okay so it doesn't make a difference so so it is also evident from equations 4 and 5 that if load were purely resistive v1 v2 i1 and minus i2 are all in same phase if r is much much less than l1 l2 and m okay so that's what we had to prove so we have proved all the relations of the transformer and that was my analysis for the problem i hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you enjoyed the analysis of the transformers please do give it give it a thumbs up and uh, please do share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, through telegram discord whatsapp or whatever medium you use for networking with them and most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel you know what to do uh, please do hit that subscribe button please subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated for uh, uh, doing new videos for you uh, frequently and i'm sorry about uh, uh, delay in this video i was out for a tour so i promise that i'll uh, do this video when i have 6110 subs but uh, i am 30 subs over that uh, target uh, nonetheless okay so i have done this video i hope you liked it uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll uh, see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you